Okay, so, so we've got the decision about why you want to publish, and we've got you thinking about um, where you might publish, what the kind of the factors are that you need to consider um, before you publish. So already you've got an eye on that, but obviously we have to talk about your, your paper and what's going to, how you're going to maximise your chances of getting published. Um, now, logically, your paper will be about the kind of research that you're doing, but sometimes it's not quite as simple as that. There may be some things that you're doing that you can turn into a paper that's not quite obvious. So the typical advice will be about your PhD. Um, each chapter of your PhD potentially could be a paper. Um, and that's a great way to start. But there are other things. It may be that as part of your PhD, you're doing a kind of uh, uh, a parallel project that in, that in itself may well be turned into some kind of paper. You're using, using the same research, using the same research skills, uh, but just to a different end. And that may be something to think about. It may be that you've got something that's actually quite opinionated and it isn't necessarily based on the research, but it's something that you want to put forward as a kind of more theoretical piece. That's something to think about. It may be that as a result of your research, you've done some kind of conference paper. And again, this is a traditional way of making that jump from doing research into getting published. But putting your pen to paper, then you need to think about uh, what it is that you're actually going to write. And the best way to kind of start is to think about who the editors are and who the reviewers are and what are they going to be impressed by. So it may be, um, well certainly, they will be impressed by originality. In fact, the opposite. They will not be impressed by a lack of originality. If what you're doing is not original, then you, know, you need to think again. But it absolutely has to be original. Um, one of the key questions that editors and reviewers will ask themselves is that, is this an original contribution to the body of knowledge? And that's the kind of minimum bar that they're expecting. If they're not persuaded it's an original contribution to the body of knowledge, then you may well get rejected straight away. So not only does it have to be original, but you also have to be persuasive in saying it's original. And that's a key thing. You'll be aware about things like research methodology, the clarity, the logical progression of the argument. All of these things are important. One of the simpler things, and this is probably the number one reason why articles don't go into peer review and get rejected straight away is that they don't adhere to the editorial scope and objectives of the journal. So every single journal will have uh, an author guidelines or, or scope or some information about the kind of research they want to publish. If your article is for whatever reason outside of that, then it will just get rejected. Editors are very, very clear about the scope of the journal and what they will look at they will. and they will just then reject straight away anything that's outside of that and it will be very difficult if not impossible to persuade them that your article, even if it is outside, should be inside. Now in terms of the overall structure, we need to think about firstly the purpose and the purpose should be absolutely up front and it should be clear what your purpose is. It should be clear to you, but also you have to make it clear. Um, is it something interesting? Is it a challenge? Are there solutions that you're providing? Are you challenging other people's solutions? Exactly what is your in? Where are you coming from at the start of the paper? Now, what you've got to think about is how you translate, how you transition from that original purpose through all the sections of the typical article and make sure that it's logical and you come to the end of the conclusion that definitively answers that purpose that you originally stated. Now, what we have here is um, a guide to how you potentially structure your article. Now, this is usually where people get their phones out and start taking pictures, which is fine. Um, I don't want you to think that this is the, the definitive guide to how to write an answer. Okay? Other ways are equally as valid. What, where this comes from is from dozens and dozens of conversations with Emerald editors about how things, how they wish articles were written, 
um, how their experience in terms of seeing well-written articles, how they would advise their own PhD students and early career scholars how to write articles. Now basically what they were saying is that you should start with your figures, your data, your tables, your theory. Whatever it is that you found out, what it is that you want to share, what it is that, that is the original contribution to the body of knowledge. Now the reason you start there is because that does not change, that cannot change. And it's much better to start with something that's never going to change as the kind of platform, as the, as the foundations of your paper, rather than something else. For example, the introduction or the title that you can change in a moment's notice. Once you have that down, then you build around it. So tied to that are your methodology, which again should be um, directly from, um, fixed to what the actual results were the results themselves, and the discussion where you're putting these into context. And that's the core of the paper, that's the middle of the paper, that's the heart of the paper. After you've got that down, and when you're happy with all of that, then you can kind of start to get a little bit more creative with your how you look, uh, word things, and you can think about your conclusion. Does your conclusion follow from all of this? You can then think about the introduction, how best to introduce this. A lot of your introduction, introduction will feed from this because you'll actually, it'll almost give you a new perspective. Rather than thinking about the introduction per se, you'll think about what you've actually done and there'll be other things that you want to highlight. The very last thing you should think about really is the title, title and the abstract. They can be done out afterwards. Yes, you do need to spend some time on these, but it's much better to do that when all of this is ready. <laughs>